Aloha mai kākou, o au o Bijia Kui, e i au me ke kahi o ka uma uo aloha uh, E olu olu oi hai mai o ai kou inoa, no hea mai oe Te la aku A te la aku so uh, O wao ke koa, no ho au maa kane ohe uh, No wahi wa mai au uh, O puka au i ke kula o leilehua A uh, I ke mana wa ke hele nei au ke kula nui o uh, Winward. Winward. Ah, ha ka me au i nui i nei malila. What are you uh, researching there? What are you in there for? Oh. Ah. Ka ke major nei wau i ka olelo hawaii. Ah, uh, so o ka olelo hawaii ka ka makia ka makia the major. Aye. Okay. So, ua kona mai au i ke ia hoa, e puka ka mai ili o mei au uh, No ka mea ua mamake no wau e pa i wiki o hou no ouko a pau na me na na mei nei <coughs> So, without further ado, let's actually get started with the actual conversation First thing I wanted to ask you, what got you into Hawaiian culture? Nothing really with Hawaiian culture is just seeing my. I enjoy things like working in the loikalo. I enjoy, you know, all the things that we did back then. Well, not we, but the kupuna did back then to strive, keep going forward for us where we are now and for the future, for the keikis, you know. So my biggest thing was to, I, I got interested because it was just something I found interesting. There was really no major cause, it was just an interesting thing for me, like Hawaiian mythology and, uh, you know, just I enjoyed learning about old Hawaii to see where the kupuna stood back then and where we stand now. Hoi hoi loa ke lai. So, heha ke kahi mau mea punehele au i hanai ko wali ili. What are some, some of the things, Hawaiian things that you used to do back when you was a kid, some of your favorite stuff? Oh. Um, back then, we would, you know, obviously go antinonas, go to the loikalo, clean up, and then, more recently, it was things like Hula and uh, Olelo Hawaii, those kind of things. Hiki ya oike hula. Ikea manava ale. Ale mai ka ie. Okay, so let me ask you Did the culture come first before the language, or did the language uh, sort of move you towards the culture? How, how did you really get uh, the language part? That would be doing things in Hawaiian. You know, like I said, cleaning the lo'ikalo, doing hula and all that kind of stuff was interesting. But what really drew my love for, well actually what the missing piece was, what brought me closer to my Hawaiian manaona would be Olelo Hawaii. I was gonna say Oa. No, no, no. But, uh, so now you're you're very interested in Olelo Hawaii. Aye, aye. So, ke ho'omau ni oi ke o anu, ya? Uh, hea ha ke kahi mea le'a le'a. What is something that's fun uh, that you like to do? In Hawaiian language, about Hawaiian language, etc. Mama ke awe ao aku ika olelo Hawaii. Ah, mama ke awe ao mai ika olelo Hawaii no hoi. So mama ke awe lilo ikumo olelo Hawaii. Aye, aye. <laughs> that that's very important. Aye. See, my mana always we don't have a lot of Hawaiian language teachers. Aye. And of course, I'm gonna go there. Part of it is because of pay. One of it, because we all know that Aali Lava Kauku na na kumu eh, the the 
wages for teachers aren't really that good. Right. So let me ask you, notwithstanding that, do you still want to become a kumu'ulala Hawaii? Aye, most definitely. My kailo. So, me being a Hawaiian language teacher honestly has nothing to do with pay. It's the aloha within me to... It, not really the aloha, but I feel it's my kuleana to, you know, teach Olelo Hawaii. Because, as you and I both know, Olelo Hawaii is probably an important thing to the culture. Like, both our favorite are uh, Olelo no Eau, uh, Maka Olelo no Keola, Maka Olelo no Tomate. Aye, aye. Oi, kakahi o ko uma olelo no eo punahele loa. Aye. Iko olelo no ke ola, iko olelo no kamake. Aye. And, he wahi mana o ko. I would add on to the part that you said about Hawaiian language being one of the most important, and I would argue that it is the most important. Because with olelo comes ike and kuana ike. With it comes knowledge, with it comes a perspective, a way of seeing the world. In, in the lens that English cannot afford you, Aye. that olelo pa'i ai, pidgin cannot afford you. Aye. Regardless of what people say, Hawaiian language is most important in the culture. Aye. And I like to use that. Iko olelo no keola, iko olelo no kamake. Not Aye. just that words can hurt and words can build. Aye. I like to say that without the language, the culture dies. The day that we stop speaking Hawaiian, and the day that we, revert, that we revert back and try to make it seem as if Hawaiian is in no way, shape, or form as important as English, which I would say it is even more important than English in Hawaii, on that day that we start treating it as we treated it back in the 40s, 50s, 60s, the language will die. It'll just go like that. Especially because we don't have a lot of speakers nowadays who were even if even if you were to well not even if you were to but if you do if you do go and take out the language mm -hmm. and there's not enough people to continue the language it will go faster than it did back then way faster mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but for you Hawaiians out there and you so long the blood's still going, so long the heart still working, Olelo Hawaii will live. Mm -hmm. I make that a promise. Yes, and a promise that is Olelo uh, Pa'anokela. Another thing that I, that I wanted to say was that uh, there's a saying, Ike ia kamanu makana kanu. Mm -hmm. A bird is recognized by the sound it makes. Yes, yes. We can perfectly put this into the situation right here. We know a German is German because he speaks German. Aye. We know a Japanese person because they speak Japanese. We know the Koreans because they speak Korean. The Chinese, they speak Mandarin, Hakka, Cantonese, and a plethora of other Chinese languages. We know a Filipino because Filipinos speak Filipino and Tagalog and Cebuan and uh, Ilocano. And too much to count. <laughs> <laughs> and all, all of those other languages that belong to the Philippines. Aye. In Hawaii, too long have we been uh, recognizing or recognizing Hawaiians based solely on their skin color. Aye. So you're brown, you might be Hawaiian, but this white person, how can they, they how can they be Hawaiian even though they might have a Hawaiian name? John Smith and Wesson. Just oh. kidding. <laughs> I mean uh, it, it it happens like that. And for me, how can you tell a Hawaiian is a Hawaiian? By the language they speak. Hi. By the language they speak. So Hawaiians, me, you, our parents, our kupuna. The opio na kuwa pa Hawaii. E hele no oko kii ko olelo Hawaii. Ya umay ko olelo Hawaii. Ko umau no. You know, learn the language. Get the language. We need to renormalize the language. Yes. That's what we yes. need to do. We need to renormalize it. 
Mamake au e nana aku i ka pau o lele ki i oni oni a nana aku i na polo kalamu o lele hoi i I wanna watch TV I wanna turn to a channel other than OED TV Aye. And I wanna watch Hawaiian language programs Not just teaching Hawaiian Also not just what we both do when Mary Monarch comes on is Put it to the Hawaiian setting but you know Yeah, I agree I, I see I really a lot more movies that. Yeah, a lot more movies. Any TV a lot shows. More shows. Hawaiian drama. Okay, we get Korean drama. We have U.S. soaps. Another Hawaiian. Yeah, that's one of the best ways to show that Hawaiian is normalized. Have it out there, other than just in classrooms or on the bus or on Mahalo. the bus. Mahalo, Mahalo, <laughs> Welcome to the bus. <laughs> uh, very, very, very beautiful. Yes. Uh, you see, for me, oko olelo ke ka ao ka maui. For me, the Hawaiian language is the fiber of my being. I am Hawaiian, not just because I have the koko, not just because I was raised here, but I am Hawaiian because I speak Hawaiian. As, and I was just about to say, add on to that, that even though you might not have the koko, if you are strongly for, well, not strongly for, but if you have a good, you know, understanding of Hawaiian culture, you understand what it was back then, where we are now, if you can speak the language, and ultimately support Hawaii, I would consider you a Hawaiian. Maybe not. Hawaiian by blood, but just a manao. I would say that you're culturally Hawaiian. Yeah. And I am going to go out on a limb here, and I know I'm going to get a lot of heat for this, oh but boy. I'm not you. I'll, I'll get it because this is my Oh, I know that. That's this, why this is my manao. This is where he goes off into the into a scary palani. <laughs> BJ. But for me, Hawaiian identity or Hawaiian culture is separate from Hawaiian heritage. Yes. Very similar to uh, Asian Americans. And I know a lot of local people, especially a lot of Hawaiians, they sort of get all hoo hoo. When someone comes from a foreign land, from a foreign country like the United States, or, or Japan since actually uh, there have been quite a few Japanese mm -hmm. students coming to Hawaii to learn Hawaiian oh, yeah. and they actually become pretty good in Hawaiian and you see with um, Nakanaka Kepani they really have a strong feeling for Hawaii you see them doing hula you see them trying to learn they're coming here to learn Olelo Hawaii Heha Komanao okay, so as, as I was saying, <clears throat> we have them coming here, but a lot of locals, for some reason, don't like that idea. Especially if these people are pa'a with the olelo and mm. are pa'a with the culture. Because a lot of local people like to say, oh, yeah, cuz I'm from Hawaii, I know Hawaiian culture, yada, yada, yada. But they don't understand what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They know, oh, yeah, this is how you go in the lo'i kalo, this is how you plant, mm -hmm. and this is how you cultivate. Or, or, oh, yeah, this is how hula, I watched it on YouTube. Yeah. But they don't know that the movement of the hands is important. It has its purpose, it has the a The movement reason. of the feet is important. Yes. There's a reason for everything. And... Especially because it's, uh, you're telling the story with your hand for those who cannot speak Hawaiian mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> another thing about that is that what hula is is it's basically a movie of the story the chant the song the hula is not more important than the olelo which a lot of people seem to think without the language without the olelo the oli the mele the hula cannot exist. But you turn that around and you say the hula doesn't exist, the Hawaiian language still will. 
Yeah. But um, yeah, as I was saying before, a lot of local people don't like that because these people who already know Hawaiian culture, Hawaiian history, who are not from here, I really love the ones who will go out and they will help give mm -hmm. a guiding hand. No, this is not what this certain activity is about. Mm -hmm. No, this is not what this certain word means. But what happens? Doesn't You're not Hawaiian. You're not Hawaiian. Shut up. Leave. Yeah. Go back to wherever you came from, which is very, very American and very Western way of thinking. Oh, you don't agree. Goes again. You don't agree with me. Get out. But anyways, <clears throat> that can be for another time. Right. <laughs> Bombay. I don't know who's gonna do that. But the point I wanted to make is that you switch that, and it's a local person. Mm -hmm. They get no heat. They get no flat. Oh, mahalo boy for telling me that. So, there is a bit of prejudice in Hawaii. There, there is, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but we, we still want to talk a little bit about the culture and the language. Um, did you already say what you feel about Hawaiian language? Um, I have a little bit more manao that's residing, but... That's all it is. It's residing. It's living there. It doesn't want to <laughs> jump out at the moment. Um, any more mana'o about Olelo Hawaii? Other than the fact that I'm sure you... I, I mean, you did touch up on it a little bit, but uh, to... What is the word? What is the, the English word for it? What is the Hawaiian word for it? Okay. Come! Make it common. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Common. Sorry, so I'm a little slow. It. Normalize, Normalize it. Normalize it. There you go. Um, In the words of Blasphemous HD, I'm going to edit all of that out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, make it more normalized. And uh, make it being seen other than at um, a show. And I don't mean a TV show. I'm talking about... When you go down to Waikiki Shell. By the way, hea hako manao about that, you know. Where you go to a show, aloha is our word to greet people. One of our But when they jerk out the O, aloha, hea hako manao. Aleo mama keikela. I understand that's what they want to do for tourism, and we're going to talk about that. We're, get, we're definitely going to talk about that. Personally, I don't do it myself. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's way too touristy. And when people do that, aloha, and then you have the car going, aloha. Uh. I guess in one way it's using the word. But, but not in the way it should. That's my mono. It shouldn't be used that way. You know, if, if you're going to say aloha to greet somebody, aloha my couple. That's, come on. What, what what's with the point of dragging out the O? Other than to attract, or well, not attract, but because they're already there, but to make it more touristy. You know, I mean, in our in our upcoming gigs, I'm not the one talking. I'm just a guitarist. Please tell me you ain't gonna be up on the stage. Aloha. Please tell me you ain't gonna do that. No. I'm going to go, Aloha, sisters! No, I'm just so. <laughs> See, me, it's just not my thing. I, I, yeah. I really don't like the sound of it. I mean, I'm not saying people shouldn't. For me personally, it just doesn't sound right. just doesn't sound as beautiful as when you actually use the word in, in, in a more productive way. In a way that showcases the language. Aloha mai ka ko. You can even say, say velina mai. Ai. Ano ai. There's so many words to say hello. <clears throat> and for me, I've heard this from when uh, oh, I nani olelo mai but <clears throat> someone said that there's sort of levels. Yeah. So I know I would be when you first meet someone. Very mm -hmm. when you start to get to know them a little bit more. But aloha, 
is when you know you have this love for the person. So me, I don't like to use aloha too much when I first greet people. I mm-hmm. usually say ano ay, and then when I get to know them, I say velina and then aloha. Um, but that's just one way to look at the words and how how do you say hello. Mm-hmm. But like there's an other olelo na eo alipo ka ike kahalo o kahi. Aye. So the way that I learned it may be different from the way you learned it. Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot of people just say aloha. I, I guess that's fine. It's more common. That's mm-hmm. why. But another thing that I want to say about that particular olelo no eo before we go on is that we should not use that olelo no eo uh, to defend things when we're wrong. Hmm. So for example, a while ago, someone asked, oh, what is the word for chest? And I said, umauma. Mm-hmm. Someone else said, umi umi. And I said, no, umi umi is the mustache, is the beard. Mm-hmm. And then they said, ole pao ka ike ka So Seriously? Seriously. They said, ole pao ka ike ka okahi. See, the way I look at that olelo no eo is the same way you do. It, it's, not everything is going to be learned in one specific spot, one specific area. Or one specific kumo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like uh, high school, we both had kumo anzai. Mm-hmm. That was at one point. But, for me, within my entire olelo, I've had many different kumo. I started off with Kumu Kentero, moved on to Kumu Pili, Kumu Anzai, and now Kumu Tuti. For those of you guys who don't know, he's talking about uh, Tuti Kanahele, whose family comes from Ni'iho. And you know, the way we're learning things, well the way I've learned things from different teachers were always different. Because you have to well, for me, Hawaiian came easy, so I can't say that you have to learn it in many different ways. But it's good because then if you learn it in many different ways, you can teach it in many different ways. Mm-hmm. So that's why I liked actually learning from multiple kumu. One thing I want to bring up about different different ways. Variations of words. Okay. Aole. What are two other ways you can say aole? Ole or aole. Aale or ale, right? Aye. Same thing with aohe. You have aahe and ahe. In the classes of your kumu kantero, kumu pili, and kumu anzai, did you learn those those variations? I've used them, but never was it taught. So you learned it from another source. Aye, which would be you. <laughs> kumu. No, I will never give you that title <laughs> just yet. But. But I mean, like I, to just a little step off of that note while we're still on the note of learning from different mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. Every, no matter where I go and they ask me where I've learned Hawaiian, I'll tell them I've learned from multiple kumu. But my greatest resource would be you. Because you've actually taught me the variations, different ways of saying things, and just in general have taught me a lot to where when I w- moved up to that next level or I moved to that next kumu I wasn't fully ready but I was still prepared for whatever was thrown my way and it was a little easier for me to get it and that's another thing with language learning is that not only the kumu is the person teaching you but if you're lucky enough to have friends around you who speak Hawaiian Use that as a resource. Yes, yes. Use that as a resource. Because who knows where they learned it. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they learned it from from a good place. Uh, Preferably a kupuna, a mana leo, uh, a native speaker, or they learned it from a kula kayapuni. Hopefully. Because, you know, as I understand it, different kula kayapuni have different ways of speaking, especially Mm -hmm. within different teachers. So, if you have people help you who speak Hawaiian and they had different teachers in mm. different schools, that can also open your mind up to different ways of saying things, different word variations, yeah. word placements, how one thing may be different from what you may be saying, yeah. that kind of thing. So, 
in language learning, it's more than just kumu haumana. It could also be ho aloha or, or ho olelo as we call it. It could also be <coughs> uh, uh, kupuna, mm -hmm. ho hanao, someone in the family. Mm -hmm. You, you can learn it from anywhere. Just make sure that whoever is helping you knows what they're talking about. <laughs> yes. Or else you have uh, someone going around and telling you that okole means but. Yeah, you really have to bring that up. It's me good. knowing what it is. Well, it's one of well, those both things. of us and other people who can knowing what it is. But a lot of people do not. <laughs> Some do. <laughs> So, so uh, uh, hopefully, hopefully those who speak Hawaiian do. Actually, as I told you guys in the intro, I live in Kaneohe, and uh, on the way here, from uh, where was I? From town area, Kakaako. There we go. From there, I took my ride with my Anake as always on Fridays, and uh, that was actually the lesson I taught her today. The difference between. Okole and elemu. Yeah, I didn't want to say that on camera. I was trying to think of other words, but you can say it. This is your show. <laughs> the BJ Akui show. It's not the Kevin Owens show. Don't, don't like that guy. Don't, don't worry about... Uh, <laughs> I like that guy. Don't worry about demonetization of videos because <laughs> I do not have a sponsor, so I don't have to worry about that. I don't swear. Shut your... On camera. Shut, 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 shut up. <laughs> on camera, he don't. Kia e oniapa, enakini e oniapa, enavahi e oni.